In this second section, I will be talking about the overall indications, benefits, and risks for benzodiazepine deprescription. The initial indications to consider engaging a patient in a conversation about deprescribing or tapering their prescription benzodiazepine include experiencing adverse effects from the benzodiazepine that are limiting a patient's function. This includes things like cognitive impairment, falls, or respiratory compromise. If patients are experiencing a loss of efficacy of the medication for the indication it was initially prescribed, that'd be a reason to discuss beginning to taper. If they're experiencing tolerance of the medication such that the same dose is no longer having the same effect, or they find that they would need to raise their dose to get the same effect they previously got from a lower dose. If they have been taking the medication beyond a month, and if a patient requests to engage in a taper of their medication. The potential benefits of deprescribing a benzodiazepine can actually be to reduce overall anxiety. This is thought that for some patients, they actually end up with kind of an increased sensitivity to anxiety, similar to what we see with opioids and increased sensitivity to pain with long-term use. Additionally, if patients are experiencing withdrawal between their doses of a benzodiazepine, they can experience increased anxiety between their doses and actually feel some reduced anxiety when they are tapered down or off the medication and no longer experiencing that inner dose withdrawal. Another big benefit is improved psychomotor and cognitive function. I'd say this is one of the biggest motivators I find for many of my patients, especially as they get older, that gets their interest in decreasing their prescription benzodiazepine use is in order to improve their mobility, decrease the risk of falls, and improve their cognitive function. The other benefits, of course, is that it overall helps decrease all-cause mortality from these medications, and including the risk of unintentional overdose when these medications are combined with other central nervous system depressants, especially opioids or alcohol. We also see fewer motor vehicle accidents, falls, and drug interactions when we're able to decrease the use of benzodiazepines. Finally, a potential benefit is that some individuals experience benzodiazepine-induced neurologic dysfunction, also previously referred to as a post-acute withdrawal or protracted withdrawal syndrome, and can develop and experience a myriad of symptoms that lack an alternative neurophysiologic explanation that often improve with discontinuation. We'll talk more about that in a subsequent section. As far as the risks that come with deprescribing benzodiazepines, there's a wide range of estimates depending on what symptoms you identify as being part of uh, benzodiazepine withdrawal. But studies have found that anywhere between 15 and 44% of chronic benzodiazepine users will experience moderate to severe withdrawal upon discontinuation. Some of the factors that we believe increase the difficulty of withdrawal is that individuals that have either had repeated exposure to benzodiazepines and repeated efforts to taper or discontinue may experience a central sensitization, also referred to as a kindling. Additionally, folks that are older and have more medical comorbidities, while they both would benefit from decreasing their dose or getting off of benzodiazepines, it also is a risk factor for uh, more complicated discontinuation. Other severe outcomes from both taking benzodiazepines but also tapering them is suicidality. Some patients become very dysphoric, demoralized about their physical dependence to these medications as well as the symptoms they may experience while trying to come off of them and do at times become suicidal. Akathisia is a really debilitating side effect of the benzodiazepines withdrawal for some individuals and can lead to a fair amount of disability. And another risk is just the overall fear and ambivalence 
that patients have about no longer being on a benzodiazepine for whatever the indication was prescribed for. And that while they may be interested in considering a taper because they know there's things about the continued use they don't like, they're also afraid that they may feel even worse coming down or off of the benzodiazepine. However, I would like to instill some hope that overall educating our patients about the long-term risks of benzodiazepines for many individuals and offering approaches to patient-centered tapers can go a very long way. So a group out of Canada did a study called the Empower Trial, where pharmacies mailed direct-to-consumer education pamphlets to those that were long-term benzodiazepine users who had been on the medications for months or years, were over 65 years of age, and therefore was contraindicated that they continue on these medications. And they found that just receiving this eight-page brochure about the risks of benzodiazepine, about successful stories of individuals tapering off of them and alternate treatments, that many patients chose to engage in decreasing their use. So those that received this brochure, 27% of them discontinued their benzodiazepine within a six-month follow-up as compared to only 5% of the control group. You can actually access this brochure for free at the following link. I will say for many, the sample taper protocol they provide can be too rapid, especially if they're more predisposed or start to experience some of the protracted withdrawal symptoms. So that's just an important thing to keep in mind. I tend to give this pamphlet to patients and actually just exclude the sample protocol and rather engage with them in a discussion about how to approach coming up with the initial steps to taper. I mentioned that we had done a survey of individuals that had been prescribed benzodiazepines long-term and had difficulty coming off and would just like to point out that the results in that is that many patients felt like they weren't warned about the potential long-term risks of these medications and that they've only been studied in shorter term use and may be difficult to withdraw from after being taken for more than a month. And a resounding 76% of individuals said they would definitely not continued on this medication long-term if they'd known that was a possibility. So I'd just like to remind everyone that we should be doing informed consent with our patients when we start these medications and also when we engage them in a discussion about tapering them and potentially discontinuing them. There are examples of some very detailed informed consents on the Benzodiazepine Information Coalition website. It might be more detailed than you want or have the time to engage some patients with, but I think it is a good example of the myriad of things that have been documented with long-term use of benzodiazepines. And I would encourage everyone to come up with their own informed consent that they engage patients in and document. So to review the key points of this section, it's important to explore benzodiazepine deprescribing with a patient whenever they've been taking a benzodiazepine regularly for more than a month and or when they are experiencing any adverse effects or lack of efficacy or tolerance to these medications. We know that benzodiazepine deprescribing benefits include improvement in psychomotor and cognitive function, as well as decreased risk of overall mortality and morbidity related to these medications. And if I haven't hammered at home enough times already, Again, you really want to be utilizing that motivational interviewing approach to engage your patient in a patient-centered decision about deprescribing a benzodiazepine. And this should include a conversation with psychoeducation and informed consent about the process.